Hello everyone, my name is Martin from the Chair of Bioinformatics of the Friedrich Schiller University in Jena, and today we proudly present Sirius 5, a major version upgrade of Sirius. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to added functionalities, major version changes, UI changes, and more. As usual, the software is downloadable from our website, which will also be linked in the description. Okay, so from this version on, Sirius 5 uses an account-based login system. So when we first start the software, like I just did here, we are not going to be logged in, which means we are not authenticated and we don't have any permissions granted. So since we don't have an account right now, we need to create one. For that, we either go to login or to account here, and then we can create an account with this button. Okay, so we now need to enter our email address and some kind of secure password. Then we can continue and we are asked to confirm our email address. So for that, go to your email inbox, confirm your account via the link, and then you are ready to log in. We can then close this tab here, and we can use our newly created account to log in. So in my case, I will be using my personal account. And then after entering the password, we are logged in. So we can now go to the web service tab here on the top right again, to check if our authentication worked, if all permissions are granted, and also to see what license we are currently working under. Okay, so just as Series 4, Series 5 is free to use for any scientific, non-commercial institution. So verification of that status um, will be automatically done by checking your email domain. So in my case, any email ending with um, this domain here will be automatically um, using the FSU Jena license. If your institution is not on our whitelist yet, then please just contact us via email. Um, I will link the email in the description below also. Okay, and we can then also go to account here again to check our account data, to reset our password or to delete our account. I now loaded in some demo data and the first thing we're going to explore is the new improved compound list filter. Okay, so for that we go to the filter option here and we see that in particular what's new is the peak shape quality filter here and the lipid class filters. So I'm not going to go into the functional details right here, I think they are pretty self-explanatory, but um, I will explain a little bit more when we get to the underlying functionalities of um, peak shapes and lipids. We are also able to invert our filters or delete all non-matching compounds. Okay, so the next structural change is when we write our summary files here at the end of our analysis, we are now able to include all Canopus classifier predictions as well as all Canopus NPC predictions. And we can also write um, different fingerprint types for our CSI finger ID analysis. And the last one is here, top right in the settings menu. We are now able to scale our graphical user interface to better fit different display formats. Next, we're going to take a look at the new LCMS chromatogram feature, which we can find right here at the LCMS tab. Okay, so for each compound in our compound list here, we see a chromatogram of our ion peak, of the isotope peaks if detected, and of adduct peaks if detected and available. And on the right here, we have a basic quality assessment. So you can see here, we look at the peak quality, isotope peak quality, and MSMS spectra quality. And you can see what metrics are being taken into account here on the right side. Okay, now we can start our computation. As usual, we're going to compute all here to go over the changes in the compute dialog. So for starters, in the serious molecular formula identification part, you can see some minor description changes here. These, however, are only um, text changes. There are no functional changes. It's only to improve clarity. For Zodiac, also nothing changed. The biggest change was made to CSI finger ID at the bottom here. So predicting the molecular fingerprint of a compound and then searching that molecular fingerprint in a structure database are now two separate modules. This allows us to change the database we are currently searching in without recomputing the fingerprint of a compound every time. So, meaning if you have predicted the fingerprints once and you are satisfied with them, you can turn this option off and just change and search the structure database in the right module here. This obviously saves a lot of computation time and also waiting time because predicting the fingerprints can be computationally expensive. We also have the tech lipids here, which is a checkbox I will go over in more detail once we go to the lipid annotation part. Then we also enable Canopus. As usual, there are also no changes here. 
Okay, so now that our computation is partly complete, we're going to take a look over the tabs here in the result ribbon and how they changed. So first, the former Series Overview tab is now called Formulas to more accurately reflect its contained information. So the content in here didn't change, you still have the ranked list of molecular formulas, a spectrum viewer where you can choose to view the MS1, MS1 mirror plot with the isotope pattern prediction and MS2 spectra, and you still have the fragmentation tree on the right here. Note that you can navigate these viewers by zooming, by holding right click and selecting an area, resetting the zoom by double right clicking, and you are also able to scale the y-axis here by hovering over it and using your mouse wheel. Okay, next are the spectra tab and the fragmentation tree tab tabs. Nothing has changed for these. Okay, the predicted fingerprint tab up next here also has seen no functional changes. It has been moved, however, to better reflect its position in the workflow. So we look at the chromatogram in the LCMS tab, then we look at the molecular formula identification, spectra and fragmentation trees, then we predict the fingerprint, and then we annotate structures, substructures and compound classes. Okay, the next tab is now called structures. It was previously CSF finger ID details. Also no functional changes here. However, just a small reminder, you can right click these structures here and go to highlight matching substructures to get a better visual representation of how well the predicted fingerprint matches this structure here. So if you see a lot of blue areas, that means the, it matches really well. If you see some yellow areas here, that means the match is of lower quality. And if we see a lot of red areas like here, it means the match is really low quality. So that also reflects this um, square representation here that I explained in a previous video. Okay, what is new, however, in the CSI Finger ID department is the new lipid annotation functionality. For that, we are going to go back in our compound filter here. And if you remember at the start of the video, I briefly talked about this lipid filter here. We are now going to use that and set it to any lipid class detected and filter. So as you probably know and can see here, lipid structures are often extremely similar to one another, varying by, for example, only the position of the double bonds. And this difference is often indistinguishable for CSI finger ID and mass spectrometry in general, which is why we also report the lipid class up here for lipid-like compounds. And um, if you remember, in the compute dialog here, we had the option to tag lipids, which we did, and enabling this checkbox will make it so that every structure here that belongs to the lipid class um, gets a small tag here that corresponds to this class. Next is the substructure annotation tab, which brings a major functionality improvement. So at the top part here, we see our usual ranked list of CSI structure candidates, just as in the old CSI finger ID overview tab that you are familiar with. And we also see a visualization of the structure that we are currently selected here on the bottom. What's new is that we are now able to get an idea of how well a structure annotation that CSI finger ID made, for example, our top hit here, matches back to our input spectra. For that, at the bottom here, we see our input spectra and we see that peaks are marked in three different colors. So there's a black peak, there are green peaks and there are purple peaks. And um, the color definition works the same as previously here in the formula tab. So black peaks are peaks that are not explained by the molecular formula candidate. Green peaks are peaks that are explained by the molecular formula candidate. And then now what's new is purple peaks are peaks that correspond to a substructure that is part of our structure candidate. So we can circle through all these purple peaks here and we see that the corresponding substructure lights up in blue while the fragmentation sites where fragmentation would need to occur for the substructure to form are marked in red here. And we can also navigate these peaks here by using our arrow keys um, just like so. Last but not least we have the compound class prediction by Canopus up here which now also includes the natural product classes, including class, superclass, and pathways if available. And yeah, we really hope you enjoyed this new version. Please direct all questions and requests at the email address in the description. Once more, you will find the link to the download as well as documentation and demo data also in the description. Thanks.